Returning home from my funeral, my wife stops me at the front door, says it is against the rules for me to enter. I sneak inside, but am caught. I tell her that we can manage. Looking in a mirror, I see the truth. April presses down the left arrow on the remote. Her bare feet block the screen. She shifts. Three in the afternoon disgusts her. Distracted by cigarette burn patterns on her robe, she adds one to complete the constellation. She lines up cotton balls next to a glass, pours in polish remover, stirs with each finger. Her Merlot lacquer stains the acetone. She wipes off her nails, files them, brushes on fresh color. There is snow on the TV screen. He drives his truck across the ice, drills a hole wide enough for whatever bites, makes a bonfire on the lake, sleeps. Behind the steering wheel, waits for the chance to signal a hit with his headlights, warms himself on Jim Beam. In the morning, the pickup fishtails to shore. His catch, ice in the empty bottle, slamming against the tailgate. I have to account for what I leave, roof, cellar, everything in between. I have to account for what I leave, roof, cellar, everything in between. Repairs left long enough to forget, designs to open spaces for new light, gardens planted in spent soil. A well-polished slide, ten years long. I never managed to climb back up. An obedient dog, a porcelain girl, which will break as I close the door. I discover a forgotten room that is haunted by a demon who evokes unnerving dread. To use the room, I must bear its presence. I am compelled to linger there. The barista opened her school bus doors, asked me to go with her to Maine. We'd need to return by next morning. I wasn't sure the bus could be loaded and make it back in time for work. She knew a way. I climbed on board. Leaving the restaurant, my favorite shirt unravels. I pull the thread to break it off, only to feel the line run up my arm. Seams divide, sleeves fall away as I push through the glass door. 